745 KNEB, a little bit of light snow overnight, so be careful, a little slick in spots, 26 degrees. As we begin News Extra, brought to you by Intralinx, and here's Kevin Mooney. And thank you, Dennis. Good morning, everyone. We welcome Dennis back after his uh, week-long vacation. Thank good, you. To, good to have you back, partner. Good to be Happy here. New Year. I hadn't been able to say that to you. Yeah. Happy New Year to Mayor Ed Mayo here from Gearing. And uh, we're going to talk about 2013 as we look forward. And uh, one of the first things I was going to ask you was uh, about the police department. The latest you've heard from Mel. I mean, there was a council meet after a council meeting. He mentioned he was seriously thinking about retiring in midsummer, the police chief, and Mel Griggs, and now the latest uh, you've heard is that he's uh, hanging in there. Huh? Sounds like he's going to stay for a while anyway. All right. So, uh, so he's we, doing a good job. So. All right. So the latest is that uh, Mel is going to stay. Um, McKinley School Project uh, is uh, the number one thing we'll talk about. Um, that particular thing where the city was trying to get that that property and, and and start to renovate that area. You guys have finally got a deal, and uh, now you're just waiting to to get the the funds from the state to help renovate that, right? The contracts all been signed by the state. We're just waiting for the release of funds, and uh, hopefully we'll get that block cleaned up and put it into market-based housing. Uh, we've got three years to get the project completed. All right, now market-based housing. What uh, describe what this project would entail, basically? Well, one house uh, needs to be, uh, as I understand it, more of an ADA accessible type property, and at least one of the houses needs to be built by a nonprofit. And it looks like we have the Gearing High School that is uh, interested in building at least one and possibly two or more houses there over that next three year period through their uh, building construction class. And it will start in two phases. Uh, we'll start on the east side of the block tear out the parking gr uh, parking lot or the concrete that's there in the fence and move the fence around the building and then phase two will come in and do the demolition of the building and, and uh, move forward with the finishing of housing in that side. All right, so when you get the state funds, how much does that cover for the cost of this? Uh, state funds will go for the uh, uh, construction and, and materials there. Uh, we're going to be getting approximately $463,000 of state funds for that. And by the time the project's done, it'll be about 913000 Okay. And the rest of the money uh, the city has, has in economic development funds, is that how it works? Well, at market-based housing, that means we can actually sell them and hopefully make a profit on them and use some of those profits to finish that project. Okay. All right, let's move on. Uh, North 10th Street resurfacing. People need to know that's coming up this summer, right? That should be starting just a little bit before Oregon Trail Days. And uh, we've got a, an agreement with the county. They're going to do the west half from Stable Club Road along to the uh, middle of the bridge there on, on the southbound side since the county is responsible for that portion of property. And uh, that project's an 80-20 match, and we're utilizing the last of the uh, old highway funding mechanism at about er, $850,000. Okay. All right. So be prepared for that this summer. Uh, you have a new landfill site. You've chosen a landfill site, and uh, we're kind of doing the last part, the last uh, building the last part of the, the last cell over at the old, old landfill, right? Cell 6 is under construction. We hope to be in that here in the next couple of weeks and, and starting to fill that and finish that off. The new landfill, uh, council approved purchase of that a little over a month ago and we're in process of doing the due diligence. We'll do air, water, and soil sampling there, make sure that everything's environment, environmentally sound and then meets EPA and NDEQ guidelines. If we do this right with the environmental studies and things that we're pushing to have done in there, uh, our great-grandchildren will never have to worry about looking at a landfill. Well, that's good. And uh, the new landfill site, once again, maybe describe where that is. If people know where the Reinhold Potatoes area uh, is, uh, they'll, they'll kind of get an idea, right? Yeah, if they know where Weinhold Corner is, they're yeah. coming around on East Highway 92, right. about a mile east of the overpass on, on 71 Heartland Expressway. It's pretty much right in that area. 
All right. And the reason why you had to I had to do something to, for a new landfill site, even though we're not looking for another what 10, 12 years before it ag we actually use it, is because it does take a long time to do all this due diligence you talked about. Due diligence to do everything required by NDEQ and EPA is going to take a minimum of five years, probably six years, and uh, everything's got to be for lack of better terminology, according to Hoyle, to, to get it to fit and make sure that everything is, is proper and, and we have the, the means to do any mitigation that needs to be done as the landfill is built. All right. Let's go to probably uh, what Denny will call my favorite uh, subject is the golf course um, and the new tenant for the restaurant. Uh, you've got some letters out and uh, hopefully we're going to get a re get a response. Am I right? We're actually starting to get responses from those letters of interest, and uh, the Recreation Committee will be getting those letters in and starting to review those, what everybody's proposals are, by the 18th, and if they like what the people's plan and desire and dream is for the uh, golf course, they'll go ahead and move forward and, and select at least one candidate to move forward with. Uh, we have had people call in and ask everything from just a simple lease agreement with the clubhouse up there to people want to know if it was okay if their letter of interest included the purchase of the entire golf course. Well, okay. Do you have any official proposals in yet? Uh, just people that have called and asked, right? It's just people calling and asking. So. How many How many people have you had call and ask? Do you have any idea? Well, there's, there's been a handful. I don't have the exact number, but uh, there's been a handful of when finance director gets a few people calling in and asking specifics he runs across the hall and lets me know all right so uh are we gonna i know golf season starts basically april 1st is the beginning of golf season although uh, the weather sometimes doesn't allow it to really get going until may but uh do you think we'll we'll have like a full service restaurant up there by the time golf season starts with all the time it takes to get a liquor license and everything we hope to have at least so the golfers will be able to go up there and get a sandwich or something while they're playing around to golf. But uh, the, the intent is to have the, the facility open and, and providing service to the community. All right. Are we looking at full service or just kind of a snack place? Or do you, it, looks hard, it depends on what It depends do. on what the, the inter letters of interest say when they come in. And, okay. uh, there's some of the people that have been expressing interest. It's, it's neat to hear what they have in mind. All right. Uh, real quick, the sports complex, is that idea, uh, I know you've got some criticism over it, is that idea still on the table? The, the idea is still on the table. Uh, that was actually never one of my projects, and I had a couple of council members ask if I would, could support it, and they give their idea, and, I, and we talk back and forth, and boils down to uh, if certain criteria are met, met I could support it, and one of them is the feasibility study that needs to be completed regardless if it's just going to be baseball fields or it's going to be a full-blown arena. Uh, I've actually had people call and want to put in a baseball and a hockey team out here even though we have not put in the feasibility study yet. And without an, if you do the, the arena concept, uh, without the feasibility study to, to uh, say whether it will or will not work and uh, without getting the anchors in to support the facility to make it so that it is not a burden on taxpayers uh, it's not worthwhile doing in 2002 the f concept first came up and uh, while i was on council and i happened to be the one who screamed the loudest longest and hardest to kill it because there was no feasibility study or any mention of a feasibility so study. how do we get a feasibility study uh, done i mean the council is uh they're sitting on it. They're sitting on it right now. Is there? Is it in committee? Is it gonna? Do you think it's gonna happen? What do you think it's gonna? There's been a shuffle on some of the committees. I don't know if it will uh, actually come out or not. We've got a couple of new council members that uh, they need to see both the pros and cons of the full-blown concept. Uh, they're going by what they said they heard from their constituents as they were knocking on doors last uh, November and October. They were trying to uh, listen to everybody, and they were saying that they they couldn't support it without knowing more about it. And 
I have is just a limited amount of information that I can get for them without the feasibility study. It's a, it's a moot point. Okay. Real quick, because we're running out of time. The revitalization of uh, the north half block of 10th and M Streets, that's where we're supposedly going to put a new library. Is, is uh, I, I know we've knocked down some, some buildings there, but you still have another building uh, there, the Prairie Plains Quilt Shop. If you're going to put a library there, you have to move that out. I know negotiations are going on. Uh, where are we at with that? Um, I know Lane says he's thinking we're going to have a new library at that place at the end of the year, he told me one day. I don't know. Uh, that's let The developer needs to come to the table and, and show a lot of information there that we actually do have the uh, retail space and corporate partners available to commit to that project. Uh, if it's just going to be a standalone library, I have a feeling it's going to be an uphill battle to get the, get a library set on that particular piece of property. So do we have an alternative site for a new library, or we just use the current library? We've got a lot of people would say we ought to just stay with the current library. There's alternative sites, and uh, there'd be a lot of renovation needed to do the the new li or the old library to bring it up to standard so that it would uh, house all the equipment and things they need in there. Okay. Alternative sites like, can you say where alternative sites would be real quick here? Uh, there's there's just a couple of them downtown in the area there, and that's what people are looking at. Uh, their old lane property was purchased it with the in initial intent of putting a library on that for the old lane's auction house. And, and uh, I think with the, uh, become the availability of the north block on 10th and M, uh, the design has changed that would make the lane property uh, unfeasible. Okay. All right, very good. Good luck in 2013. Thanks for coming in. It's going to be a fun year. Yeah, should be.